Welcome to the Living Ageless and Bold podcast. Each episode, I bring you amazing women who inspire, educate, and share their experiences and journeys along the way. So grab a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, find a cozy spot, and let's relax and have some fun hearing what can be accomplished after 55. I'm your host, Christina Daves, and in every episode, I just love bringing amazing women to the podcast that they're either going to share their experiences or give you great information or just share what they've learned along the way on their journey. So today's episode is really great. They're all great, but I love Christine Howard, who's with us today. She has an amazing story that I'm going to have her share with you. She is an author. She is a speaker. She works with women getting the frenzy out of our lives. Like, what does this next chapter look for? And it's all about living your radiant life turned on. Uh, Welcome, Christine. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Christina. I am beyond grateful to be to be here with you today. So I want to go back because, you know, you had this picture perfect life that, you know, we can look back. We all think maybe we had it. But a lot got you to where you are now. So let, let's talk about your journey to today. Sure. Happy, happy to share. So I, I think there was a key part of my life that happened in uh, around that 2014 time frame. I was a wife, a mom of two teenagers. I was starting to see this empty nest coming in front of me here and really being able to rejuvenate my career my relationship with my spouse and, and have like a whole new kind of like lease on life. And it was really looking to be an exciting time. My husband was a very successful professional. We, we truly had a lot of blessings in life and um, really were living really what looked to everybody as a good life. And externally, it was absolutely that way. But I will say inside, I definitely was feeling this tug of of the years where I really denied some core things about myself. And I know there's that whole thing of being the mom and the wife and really balancing everything. I'm all about that. But for me, I ignored Um, one of my big, bad, bad habits and patterns was like really bad self-care. And I like to frame it this way, like self-care was emergency stops only. And, And it was this, like, we've heard this, we're on that treadmill, that go, go, go. I had been like raising my kids, supporting my spouse's career, you know, journey. And, and I was on that treadmill for many years. So 2014 came and I made this decision that I'm going to up my coaching certifications. And I was actually working on a a health coach certification and dealing with some stresses still at that time, you know, teen years, two teens, uh, a year apart very tough times, one hyper-focused on school, one exactly the opposite. And it was tough. Tough. How did you and, people have two kids so different, right? <laughs> it pull, seriously polar opposites. And, it, and they've since come closer together. But in that, those teen years, it was so tough. And, and um, so I was, um, my career was going through a health coach certification. I was thinking, oh, maybe this is a new path for me. As a health coach, I was very health conscious and um, I went in for my routine mammogram in 2014 and was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. Now, if you ever want to get a breast cancer diagnosis, like, thank goodness, this was the best one you could ever have because it was pre It was in some world, they call it precancerous, but in the Western world, it was cancerous and they wanted to treat it just like they would if you had invasive cancer. So they wanted to do a whole slew of things, which I, interestingly enough, in my, my health coach certification, it was all about cancer. So it gave me a whole new perspective as I was oh. going through it. And, and that was like, I call that wake up call number one. And a big lesson out of that was that I really was not taking care of myself at, at a physical and an emotional level. And the result of that was the, dis, the big dis-ease that was in my body. So I went through holistic treatment, some Western medicine um, surgeries, and then I got a clean bill of health. So, you know, crisis number one dealt with, but I will say during, during my health uh, wake-up call, my 
my 21 year marriage uh, imploded, exploded, however you want to look at it, it basically ended. And during that time, it, it went from me looking at self care and taking care of myself to truly like dropping all the baggage that I had been carrying in my life, like all these unfulfilled dreams and promises and wishes and hopes and and actually even a lot of controlling of as I looked at myself and where I was really trying to control things in my life that wasn't my business to control. So the end of my marriage, I went into this really deep dive of really turning over every rock in my life. Like, how did I get here? How did I be? Was I this devoted mom and wife and and really denied all these things that I wanted for myself? And How did I get here? It was truly a very humbling, humbling experience for myself to to look at it. And, you know, regardless of the choices of my husband, it really I brought it back to me and claimed and owned my part of the relationship and my part of my journey in life. And and out of that, it takes go ahead. two people. No, it's, it, it don't, does. You know, and people watching, you can't beat yourself up. You can't blame yourself. A hundred percent. You can't blame another person. It it takes two people for any it does or not work. Totally. And this self realization that you did sounds actually amazing and probably was very cathartic to uncover things as you went and grow as a person. Huge. Huge. Yeah. I yeah. it was one of those divine timings where like I, and, and I actually think God had my I know God had my back and he knew I was not living to my fullest potential. And, you know, again, we can look at the conditioning of our lives and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm pro marriage. I'm pro family and pro all that stuff. But for me, there were some very strong um, beliefs and conditioning that really were in place. And I was very much an either, or either I was a great wife and great mom, or I was an, a businesswoman. And, and I could not, like my brain could not comprehend that they could they could flow together. So, so part of that journey was really uncovering all this. And I was just, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but as I'm going, go, please do. watching is we've all been there. I mean, it's, I know it in my community, sometimes it's hard because it was a lot of stay at home moms that I was this crazy driven woman, you know, that, but I'd be at the swim team practice. And so it's, it's, conflict that I caused myself. Nobody cared. Nobody judged me, but it, it is. And can you do both? Can you write a great wife and mother? And can you run a successful business? You can, but you can. A lot of <laughs> imposter syndrome. There's, there's a lot of things that go, go with it for women who are like us and women watching. Absolutely. It, it's hard. It's hard. Well, that. oh, that's where you come in. We'll get to that too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. but, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. So that was my. I, I started seeing all these beliefs. Yeah, all these beliefs and and mindsets that that got me to where I was. And in a cu couple of the big pivotal things that came out of it was, I was really looking externally for validation. I wasn't claiming and owning those ideas and those gifts and talents I was bringing to the degree that they were calling to me to be lived, experienced, and expressed. So I was like self-denying and looking again for that approval. I saw that I was not truly loving myself. This was huge, huge realization in that I could say logically, I love you. I could look in the mirror and say, I love you, but I could not feel that love for myself. And so, you know, I, I realized until I truly began to love myself wholeheartedly, you know, I could see why I was denying myself because I, I wasn't owning my worth. I wasn't owning who I was uniquely as a person. And, and that was a big realization. And what was that process to yeah, learn to feel love for yourself? Yeah. So I started doing mirror work, Christina. And when I first looked in the mirror and it was just one of those things that came to me in an inspired way. I didn't, I hadn't even really learned about mirror work at all. But one day in the mirror, I was doing my makeup and I looked at myself and, and really I saw this shell of a woman and, and I realized this is, I knew this wasn't who I innately was. So I just said, hello. And I smiled at myself and I felt really awkward. 
really awkward. And then the next time I did it, I said, hello, I love you. And just sat with, how does that feel? And at first there wasn't, there wasn't feeling there, but I realized I needed to draw out that love. And, and I don't know if I had been going through some other, I might've been going through a class at a time, but again, just like I can visualize my granddaughter now or my kid and like I can feel love for them. So I really evoked that toward myself. And then I just, I sat in that feeling. So I'd say, hello, I love you. And then I'd say something positive about myself and really acknowledge myself for something I'd done, something I was proud of, quality that I possessed that I really appreciated. And little by little, every day, every day, every day, I, I felt more alive. I felt more connected with myself. It was almost like I was turning up that dimmer switch on who I was. And, and little by little, it really started igniting shifts inside me where I became more confident, more happy. I started to, my creativity started going like crazy with ideas for business and my life. And it, it really started to feel that love for myself. So it was, it was a core ritual that I was doing every day in a very deep way. And I still do it today, but I have a little bit more of an abbreviated version because I'm I'm at maintenance mode, baby. I'm at maintenance mode now. <laughs> That's. I was going to ask though. Do you do that? I I yeah. had never thought of that, but but a, a lot of people are watching, and how easy to just look at yourself and say I love you, you know, and pull out. I mean, we all have gifts. You know, when I work with my clients too, it's you know sometimes people say, how can you work with so many real estate agents? Let's say, I'm like, because everybody has a unique gift that they offer. So we all have that gift, but it's identifying it and and being okay with, hey, I'm pretty darn good at this. And that's okay. Right. Like, that's good. Right. I, I'm allowed to say that. Yes. Well, and the more uh, we acknowledge ourselves, the, the more we, we see it in our lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so will you work with, I know I have so many questions I want to ask. Uh, it's good. Go for it. But, but you work with women like this. Who, and I don't know if you actually do the coaching on the mirroring, but I'd love to know what you see. Is there a common thread, you know, women over 50, 55, you know, in a transition in their life that you see, oh, wow, the kids leave and here's a, a common thing that maybe we can help people watching like, OK, this is going to happen and it's OK and we can fix it. Yeah. Well, I think the, the common thread that I see and. Uh, and I, you know, whether it's a woman that has had a professional career and now she's shifting for, you know, for whatever reason she's done working for somebody else and she wants to work for herself or empty nest, like the common thread is each one of these women are just really feeling this inner stirring, inner, inner yearning, inner like desires in a way they cannot ignore it anymore. And I, I think, you know, maybe part of it is that we're in that second half of life. And there might be that there's a little bit of that subconscious, you know, clock ticking. And so much too of it is like, we've been here for everybody else, whether it was our boss, whether it was our children, whether it was a combination of the two and now, and what were their feeling. And like, this was me too. It's like, now is my time, not in a selfish or a, or like a, you know, mean way or like a grumpy way, but it's more like, okay, I like, we're ready to really be that deeper part of ourselves that we maybe have sense was there, but it did, the timing wasn't right, right? We were focused in other areas for, for certain reasons. And now it's like, let's express ourselves. Let's, let's follow that dream, that passion project that we always had nagging at the back of us. And that's, that's a big part of it. Um, that's, that's common through all, of, through all of the women I work with. Well, and it's amazing because I'm interviewing women our age and and everybody's doing something now that has purpose for them. This podcast, this is something that I, it just sparked in me. I was having a conversation with a friend and she's like, Christina, you need to do this. Like you, you need to tell stories and talk about this. And it just lit me up. Like this is bringing me joy. Like I'm so excited to share people like you to women like us, just so we all know we're not alone. And like you just said, this is a, a common thread, 
But I also think that a lot of women don't know how to do it. Like I had right. to help me with this, you know, so this is where you come in. Like what? Talk about the kind of women that you work with and the shifts you help them make. Um, yeah. Because like you said, I, I can't tell you how many of my friends, 30 years in corporate, they're retiring now in their mid 50s. It's like, wow, I got another 30 years. I have a whole nother career. At least. Of me if yeah, I want it. Right. It's whole, the world, right? Right. This is our well, oyster. It is our oyster. And the, the thing is, there's there's a lot of beautiful things we can take from our corporate career. I had a 17 year career in information technology. It brought some great school, tools and skills and and uh, habits for me. But there's a whole nother set of thing. And this is where I come in. This is where women, I think, can kind of flounder. Because when you're you're doing that external climb in the corporate ladder, whatever it is, a lot of times we're, we're taught to be here. Think strategically where we're in our head, we're power planning, we're strategizing, and, and we're, we're not connected to this, to this, to our heart, to, you know, I, I'm a big soul person, you know, our heart and our soul, our intuition. And I know for me, that was a huge shift in my journey. And part of that healing process is I, I saw firsthand where I was not listening to my intuition, to my heart, to what my soul was calling to me. I was so externally focused. So I help women really get back and connect with all of themselves, with their their intuition to, um, to start to to listen instead of think was a huge shift because we are so wise. We have so access to so much wisdom through, you know, whatever your beliefs are, God, source, universe. We don't have to work so hard. And this is a very hard thing to take come to grips with is. We can work in a completely different way in the second half of our life where we allow ourselves to receive support, ideas, insight, and then we take inspired action. And so p- part of my whole life reorientation is what I help other women do. Like I call it radiant achievement, radiant leadership, a radiant lifestyle, but it's really letting go of a lot of the conditioned corporate, you know, beliefs and structure and coming back home to ourselves to, like you said, what let, this really sparked you, it lit you up. So how can we get ourselves still and quiet and create space for ourselves to be inspired by what is innately inside us and then to start to show up and pursue those things with trust, with patience, with receptivity without trying to force and make stuff happen. Um, it, it's, a, it's a completely new, it's a 180 degree reorientation, but it, it's such a beautiful journey when we allow ourselves to shed some of the old things that really don't serve us, keep the things that do, but let ourselves live from this inspired journey where we don't have it all figured out. Just let it unfold a little bit at a time. And you talked about intuition, that's something that I've really leaned into in my 50s. And I don't know if it's a confidence thing or I've had more time to breathe, you know, as an empty nester, the, you know, when the kids went away. But, but your intuition is pretty powerful stuff. And, and it's, a, it's really a thing. Like you really do. So listen to what your gut is telling you. Uh, you know, we, and we talked about that raising kids. You know, the doctors tell you this and... I tell this to all the young moms. I'm like, you've, you've got to go with your gut. A doctor might tell you something to do with your child, but listen, you know, what your insides are telling you. And I've really, really embraced that in my 50s. And it's really changed a lot of things that I've done. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, and it's so easy for us to do that for others. I love the example you gave of how we do that with our children, right? We can we can do that much more easily for others. But when it comes to ourselves, you know, again, whether it's conditioning or, or whatever, we just, we doubt it. And I remember, and this was part of my journey leading up to the cancer, it, and we don't realize it. So this is like, I'd love to really emphasize this point. When we discount our intuition, we ignore it. We deny it. We are really creating dis-ease in our bodies in our life, in our psyche, in our, in our, in our mental health. So I, I am not surprised at all that I, where I ended up because I had denied, 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 discounted, 
went against it. And I could just feel, you know, you feel that little stab of the heart when you do it sometimes. We don't, we, I think we, women just maybe don't realize the, the collective impact of the denial. So yeah, play, play around with it. It's never wrong. We have to learn to trust it. And it's like a muscle, just like anything else. The more we, we trust it and practice it, the bigger it gets and the more fun synchronicities and serendipities unfold as a result. Don't you love that? I, it is just, and my daughter is 23 and she's like, she's always teased me about these things. And now it's like, mom, all, you know, the meeting people who know people and how small the world is. And like you said, the, the synchronicities and the people you just happen to meet that, you know, everything ties together, but that's coming into yourself, coming into your self. And, and finding your power and finding who you are. And, and it is hard. That's why I love what you're doing, helping women discover this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one of the key steps that um, I did for myself and, and I encourage every woman to do is truly like make a commitment. You have to give yourself permission to live your radiant life. No one's going to do it for you. You can have the best spouse in the world, the most wonderful friends and children, and, and yet they're not going to really get you the way you get you. So I remember drawing, and I write this in my book, I drew a line in the sand one day and I put the stake in and I said, never again am I going to deny the callings of my soul. I don't care how small they are, how big they are, how long it takes me. It's my beautiful divine journey of my life to experiment, to express, to experience. And, and when we give that permission to ourselves, guess what? It creates a ripple and it, it's, you know, it's for our health and well-being and happiness and joy and fulfillment. Then it ripples to who? Our family and our friends. And then that ripples into the world. So, you know, I know every one of us, and you mentioned it, like this second phase about really having a more, being on purpose and living more purposefully it's amazing. And, and the, some of the feedback I've gotten that just blows my mind because we don't think we're really making that big of a difference sometimes. But when you get an email or a message from somebody whose life you touched, even if it was a small interaction, it, it truly recommits and reconfirms the power that we have through just being ourselves and following what is truly in a very authentic way in our heart and on our soul to do, that's the best gift we can give ourselves, our family, friends, and the world. I I can't believe you just brought that up. I got an email yesterday. Uh, So I mentor students at Virginia Tech, which is my alma mater. And every couple of years, there's one that just really listens to what I say when I come into the classes, takes it all to heart, and I really become friends with them. And uh, this young man is a senior now. And really was struggling that, you know, back in November, he didn't have a job. And, you know, I said, Trace, what company are they working for? Of course, are these big companies that hire back in November? I'm like, is that where you want to work? And he's like, no. So I sent him these little cards, like every day he had to open them, inspirational cards. And he sent me this email. I was bawling where he writes things that I've said to him on his mirror. And he opened the card. He just got, I should finish this. He just got his dream job. They actually created the position for him. He will have six people working for him. Wow. Unbelievable. And, but I kept saying, don't give up. Don't give up. You're amazing. You're amazing. And so he just got the job. He just called me a couple of days ago. And then the, the inspirational quote that he opened was basically about that. And he's <laughs> like, thank you for, you know, I love you so much. Thank you for believing in me and all. And I was just like, one person, I changed one person's life. That's, yeah. To be able to do that once in your lifetime. And you might never know what you've done. Exactly. But it, it, I, I can't. I it was just like I said, I was just bawling. Like no. it just is so empowering. It makes you feel so good. And that's what you're saying. It's like embrace all of this. We all have these gifts. Share them with the world. Share them with other people who can, you know, who, whose lives you can change. Just right. Like, exactly. Exactly. And I, and I love it. It's you, so you doing the mentoring is, is you doing something that brings you joy, that is fulfilling to you, that lights you up, right? So that's a perfect example. And then and just you being you, 
people and opportunities are going to pre- present themselves, we don't even have to figure it out, right? So this young, you didn't go searching like, I want to change some person's life. You're just bringing your gifts forward. And then this beautiful cycle that just naturally unfolds and um, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That was a great, great, powerful story. Okay, so you talk about mantras. You have certain mantras that we all need to embrace. Tell us about those. Yes. So the mantras actually started when I was doing the mirror work. And I actually ended up creating a line of products out of that, these makeup, mantra makeup mats. And one of the ones that really was powerful for me was, um, and I have several. So the first one was, beauty is being the best version of me inside and out. And, and I really embrace that. And I encourage every woman to really think of their beauty in, in the terms of you truly being your best self in, in every way, because I saw this in myself. I became so much more radiant, like, and I felt like I got more beautiful the older I got, which is fantastic. I think this is like my version of anti-aging. Yes, because you're just, when you're, you're living on purpose and you're being yourself, you, you become magnetic and radiant and, and people are like, what do you got going on there? You look younger and you're acting, you just are glowing. So um, I, I have a t-shirt that says that, and I just, a, a big one. And it helps me really also stay out of comparison. You know, we've, we've heard all those stories and you see all the social media and the airbrush this and the, you know, whatever, you don't know what's true and what's not. Like I own who I am. I own every wrinkle I have. Like I am my own, you know, version of beauty. And that's all I, can be. And when I embrace that, it, I just feel better. I feel happier. I am happier. So that, that's mantra number one. And then a second one, and I know exact, this is great for the audience because this, again, was powerful for me. I felt like a late bloomer like my whole life, truly, like with makeup and hair and fashion and, and everything. I've just been like the last one to kind of figure it out. But so my mantra is it's never too late. It's never too late. And if we have, if I have, or you have, or, you know, the, if you're watching and you still have something calling to you, speaking to you, you can absolutely bring that to life in a way that is in alignment with where you are in your life right now. Like, you know, I so look forward to relaunching my show and not just having it be on YouTube, but having it be a podcast, being on TV more, doing all these things. Like, I know there's, there's, I, I can't even see the top, the top of the mountain and that's okay because I'm enjoying every step. So it's never too late. Just keep taking one step at a time. Um, uh, and then I here's, love that. I good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> keep going. These are that's so fine. good. <laughs> good. And then I have last, and then I have one last one and that is, and this was a core one in my early healing is I am enough. I am enough where I am with everything personally professionally i am enough with i have everything i need to truly live my most happy fulfilling joyful abundant successful life i i don't you know it's this thing of self acceptance self love and self worth so it that's just a core powerful mantra that um will be with me forever <laughs> oh my gosh they're they're perfect and for this audience they're perfect uh, before we wrap up, before you go, I have two questions that I ask every guest. Uh, okay. The first one is, uh, what is your biggest accomplishment since you've turned 50? Well, I, it's non-professional, and I don't think I ever told you this. It's okay. But when, when I was 51, I competed for the last time in fitness competition, which is kind of, it's not bodybuilding, but it's like all about being fit and lean and muscular. And I competed twice when I was 51. Well, once right before my 51st and once right after my 51st. And the, the, after the second one, I took a first place trophy in two categories. And I took the overall trophy, which was a huge sword. And I was just like on top of the world. And I just so proud of myself for having followed through with what seemed so non-traditional but it was calling to me in such a big way. And to really have those wins was a huge, huge accomplishment for myself and the pictures to go along oh with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. I know you have never told me that. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, good for you. 
Uh, and then the next one is, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Yeah. Gosh, I'd say it's more of everything I'm already experiencing. Uh, I, I definitely see TV in my future. I see, I'd like to say some magazine in my future, whether it's, it's articles or print work even. And, and, and I also see myself really inspiring bigger audiences, like live audiences, and just rocking out with these amazing women who are letting go of status quo. And we're all claiming just who we innately are and committed to bringing all of ourselves to help um, live our best lives and really help heal the world. That's, uh, I'm, that's where I see myself. And I, I see it too. You, you are amazing. And you, I wish everyone could meet you in person. Christine just, she radiates when you meet her. <laughs> and you really do. You have such a presence in a room. Paul, I'm, I'm so thankful to call you a friend. And I so oh. appreciate this today. You, you are amazing. So thank you for joining us. No, oh, thank you, Christina. It's a pleasure to be here. I love what you're up to. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you who are listening or watching this episode of Living Ageless and Bold. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you want to leave a review, I would love it. And you can head over to the website, livingagelessandbold.com, where we give you information, education, special offers uh, for women over 55. So thank you for joining us. And don't forget to live every day ageless and bold. Mm -hmm.